Hi everyone, it's Professor Fermenton. In this video, we're going to talk about the chain rule. So now that we've talked about a review of composite functions, we're going to be able to use the general power rule as appropriate to find the derivative of functions raised to a power. And then we're also going to talk about the chain rule to find the derivative of composite functions in this video. So let's pick up where we left off. We're going to talk about the chain rule. We've already seen how to make extensive use of the power rule to find the derivative of power functions. But now we're going to talk about a more generalized power rule using the chain rule. So this is the power rule that we introduced earlier in the chapter. The derivative is d dx of x to the n. So x to the n is a power function where x is the variable and n is a real number. Now, how do you take the derivative of a power function? We brought the power down and made it a coefficient. We kept the x as the variable and we subtracted one from the exponent. So n times x to the n minus one power. The next example is gonna serve as a bridge between the chain rule and the power rule that we've discussed earlier so that we can develop a rule that will help us find derivatives of more complex functions. So example four, derivative of a power function, find the derivative of the composite function y equals the quantity four x cubed plus 15 x all to the second power. Now we have a couple ways of actually finding this derivative. We know that we can simplify the function first. So if you take the function four x cubed plus 15 x in parentheses squared, and you write it out twice, we know that we can use the FOIL method to simplify. So if you use FOIL, 4x cubed times 4x cubed will give you 16x to the sixth. 4x cubed times 15x will give you 60x to the fourth. Another 15x times 4x cubed gives you another 60x to the fourth. And then 15x times 15x is 225x squared. Now it's just a polynomial function, so you can use the sum and difference rules, the power rule, and also the constant multiple rule as well. So the derivative of the first term would give you 96x to the fifth. The derivative of the next term is 240x cubed. And again, 240x cubed for the third term, and the derivative of the last term is 450x. And so after you combine like terms, the derivative of y prime or dy dx is 96x to the fifth plus 480x cubed plus 450x. So in the previous section, we talked about the product rule. So if you have a product of two functions, you can use the product rule to find the derivative. So if you write out y equals 4x cubed plus 15x times itself, because it was originally squared, then you can use the power rule which means that the derivative would be the first function is unchanged, 4x cubed plus 15x, times the derivative of the second function, which would be the derivative of 4x cubed plus 15x, plus the second function stays the same, and then you take the derivative of the first function. So when you simplify by taking derivatives, you'll have 4x cubed plus 15x is unchanged. The derivative of 4x cubed plus 15x was the derivative of the second function, that's 12x squared plus 15. And then you also have 4x cubed plus 15x was the second function unchanged times the derivative of the first, which is, again, 12x squared plus 15. After you simplify by using the FOIL method twice to multiply these out, you'll get the same answer. Y prime is 96x to the fifth plus 480x cubed plus 450x. Notice that there was a lot of algebra in finding the derivative. Well, this was only for this composite function 4x cubed plus 15x in parentheses to the second power. Now suppose you have a function and you want to find the derivative of y equals 4x cubed plus 15x, and it's raised to the 20th power. You do not want to write out this as 20 multiplications of 4x cubed plus 15x and simplify it. That would take forever. And you don't want to use the product rule because the product rule that we have is only for first function and second function when you only have two functions multiplied together. This would be 20 functions multiplied together. Either way, both methods are going to be very difficult and very inconvenient. We need an easier way of being able to find the derivative of this type of function where you have 4x cubed plus 15x in parentheses and it's raised to the 20th power. The chain rule actually handles compositions where it would not be possible to multiply or simplify a function very easily. So let's talk about the chain rule, derivative rules, chain rule. And what follows, the functions f and g are differentiable functions, so that means you can find the derivative of each one. So for dealing with composite functions, this function y equals f of u is going to be called the outside function. And the other function is u equals g of x. That's going to be called the inside function. So we know that there are two different notations for derivatives. There was Leibniz notation and then also prime notation. We're going to talk about the chain rule using each of these separately. So the chain rule using Leibniz notation is written this way. dy dx, that means you're taking the derivative of the function y, where x is the variable, you can think of the chain rule as a product of two different derivatives. It's the derivative of y, where u is the variable. So notice that the outside function was y is the function's name, 
and the u is the variable. So if you take the derivative of the outside function, that's what dy du represents, times du dx. u is the function's name, and x is the variable. So let's look at the inside function. u is the function's name for the inside function, and x is the variable. So du dx is representing the derivative of the inside function. So notice in this formula, it looks like the du's sort of seem to cancel out. These are not fractions, okay? These are just representing derivative notation, dy, du, du, dx. This is just a way that you can remember the formula. The du's kind of cancel each other out, and you have dy, dx left over. So the derivative of y with respect to x is the derivative of the outside function, the derivative of the inside function, and you multiply the two derivatives together. Now, if you're using prime notation, it's a little bit more complicated to understand the chain rule. The chain rule says, if you're taking the derivative of a function that's called f of x, then the derivative will be f prime of x. It's the derivative f of u, so f prime of u, times g prime of x. So let's go back and look at the functions. The function was called f of u, so this means you take the derivative of the outside function, where u is the variable, and then you multiply by the derivative of g of x. g of x is the inside function, so g prime of x. So one thing to remember is that you can't have two variables when you're taking the derivative. You can only have one. So you can't have a variable u and a variable x. So the last thing to do is replace this u with what it was. It was called g of x, the inside function. So you have f prime of g of x is the inside function times g prime of x. So the f prime of g of x is the derivative of the outside function, and the g prime of x is the derivative of the inside function. So the chain rule in Word says the following. The derivative of the composite function is the derivative of the outside function with the inside function staying the same. That's what this formula with prime notation says. You take the derivative of the outside function, f prime, but you leave the inside function as is, times, because you multiply the two derivatives, the derivative of the inside function. And the derivative of the inside function was g prime of x. So let's do an example where we actually use the chain rule. Example five, using the chain rule, the following table gives the values of f of x, g of x, f prime of x, g prime of x at a number of values. So you have these x values where the function is evaluated, and then you have f, g, f prime, and g prime at the top. Use these values to determine f composed with g of x, so that's the composite function, and the composite function's derivative, f composed with g prime of x. So find out the values at x equals negative 1 and x equals 0. So let's start with x equals 0. So we talked about in the previous video that f composed with g of x means f is the outside function, g is the inside function. So f composed with g of 0 would be f of g of 0. So with composite functions, you need to do the inside function first. g of 0, well, find x equals 0 in the table. g of 0 is 1. So replace g of 0 with a 1. So f of 1 now. So find 1 in the table for x. And then f of 1 is 1. So f composed with g at 0 is 1. Now let's talk about the derivative of the composite function. You have f composed with g prime at x equals 0. So since this is a composite function and we're taking the derivative, we need to use the chain rule. The chain rule said you take the derivative of the outside function, f prime, but you leave the inside function the same. So you leave it as g. Then you multiply by the derivative of the inside function, so g prime. So now we're evaluating at x equals 0, so it's f prime of g of 0 times g prime at x equals 0. So let's do this in a couple steps. We need to find out g of 0 first. So g of 0 we did earlier. g of 0 is 1. So then you have to find out what is f prime of 1. And then g prime of 0, well, x equals 0, g prime is 2. So g prime of 0 is, can be replaced with a 2. So f prime of 1 times 2. So let's figure out what f prime of 1 is using the table. So when x equals 1, f prime is negative 1. So you have negative 1 times 2, so you get negative 2. Now let's talk about x equals negative 1. So again, you're going to find out the composite function, f composed with g at negative 1. That means it's f of g of negative 1. So find out g of negative 1 first. That's the inside function. So when x is negative 1, g is 3. So now we're finding f of 3. So now find x equals 3, and f of 3 is 0. 
And now let's find out what the value would be at x equals negative 1 using the derivative. So the derivative of the composite function, use the chain rule. So you take the derivative of the outside function, f prime, where you keep the inside function the same. So it was, the inside function is g, so keep it as g. Then you multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is g prime. So now evaluate at negative 1. So you have f prime of g of negative 1 times g prime at negative 1. So again, there's a couple steps to find out. You have to find out what is g of negative 1. So negative 1 for the x value, g is 3. So this will be f prime of 3. And then g prime of negative 1. When x is negative 1, g prime is 0. So you have f prime of 3 times 0. And then f prime of 3 is 2. So you have 2 times 0, and that's 0. So the derivative of this composite function when x equals negative 1 is 0. So the one thing that we noticed in the previous example is that we had to use two steps to differentiate each composite function. We always had to apply the derivative to the inside function or the inner function first, and we also had to take the derivative of the outside function. So when you use enough experience in identifying the inner and the outer functions like we did in the previous video with composite functions, you can actually find out what the derivative of the outside and the inside functions are pretty quickly. If you do this, be certain to always multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So du dx represented the inside function's derivative with Leibniz notation, or if you have prime notation, g prime of x. So this figure tells you how do you find the derivative of the composite function. So we know that there are a couple steps. If g of x is the inside function, then you have g of x is found first. And then if f is the outside function, you find f of g of x. Now with derivatives of composite functions, we know that there are a product of two different derivatives. It's the product of the derivative of the inside function, how fast does the inside function change? And it's the derivative of the outside function when you leave the inside function the same. So it's f prime, the derivative of the outside function, but you leave g of x the same. So let's talk about using the chain rule when you don't have a table of values. You just have two functions. Example six, using the chain rule, Find the derivative of the following composite functions using the chain rule. Number one, y equals the quantity 4x cubed plus 15x all to the second power. Now we did this one earlier in the video. We know what the answer will be. We can multiply this out. We can also use the product rule. Let's actually use the chain rule this time. Since this is a composite function, we know that there are an inside function and an outside function. The inside function is what was called u. It was u equals g of x. So this is u equals the inside function is 4x cubed plus 15x. The outside function is y equals a function of u. So y is, it looks like the outside function will be u squared because I'm plugging this 4x cubed plus 15x inside the parentheses. That's then being squared. So this is where Leibniz notation comes in very helpful when you use the chain rule. We know that the formula for the chain rule is dy dx, that's the derivative of y when x is the variable, is the product of two derivatives. It's the derivative of the outside function with respect to u. It's the derivative of the inside function with respect to x. So let's find out the derivative of the outside function. The y is the function's name, and the variable is u. So what's the derivative of u squared? When you use the variable, it's 2u. So now we need to find out the derivative of the inside function, du dx. So the u is the function's name for the inside function, and x is the variable. So what's the derivative of 4u cubed plus 15x? The derivative would be 12x squared for the first term, and the derivative of the second term is 15. So make sure that goes in parentheses, because that's the entire derivative of the inside function. So we know we can't have two variables. We can't have u and x, so we replace the u with what we said the inside function was, 4x cubed plus 15x. So that would be 2 times 4x cubed plus 15x times the derivative of the inside function was 12x squared plus 15. And so this is the derivative. But if we simplify, we have to use the FOIL method to multiply these two terms, these two terms. So you have 2 times 48x to the fifth, 60x to the third, 180x cubed, and then you have 225x. And then if you multiply the two through each of these terms, you have 96x to the fifth, 120x cubed, 360x cubed, and then 450x, and then combine like terms. 96x to the fifth, 480x cubed, plus 450x. That's the same answer that we had in the first example in the video. One advantage that we have now using the chain rule is that there's much less algebra to find the derivative, even when it's simplified. 
So let's try number two. Y equals the quantity 4x cubed plus 15x to the 20th. Now we talked about this one earlier. We do not want to multiply this out 20 times and we don't want to use the product rule. So let's use the chain rule this time. It's much more efficient. The inside function is the same, 4x cubed plus 15x, and the outside function would be y equals u to the 20th. So let's again use the chain rule using Leibniz notation. dy dx is dy du times du dx, the derivative of the outside function, derivative of the inside function, and you multiply the two together. So the derivative of the outside function is, what's the derivative of u to the 20th? It's 20u to the 19th using the power rule. And then the derivative of the inside function we did earlier, it's 12x squared plus 15, when you take the derivative of u with respect to x, and make sure that goes in parentheses again. And now the last step, replace the u with 4x cubed plus 15x. So you have 20 times 4x cubed plus 15x, and that's to the 19th power, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is 12x squared plus 15. And so this is the answer for the derivative of this composite function. Now again, we do not want to simplify because this is raised to the 19th power, but this is the derivative. Number three, y equals the quantity negative 3x squared plus 6x plus 5, and that's raised to the 6th power. So again, this is a composite function. You have an inside function, u equals negative 3x squared plus 6x plus 5. That's inside the parentheses, so it makes sense to call that the inside function. The outside function would be y equals u to the 6th. And so the chain rule says the derivative of y which is the function's name, where x is the variable, is the derivative of y with respect to u first, then you take the derivative of u with respect to x, and you multiply the two derivatives together. So the derivative of the outside function is the derivative of u to the sixth, six u to the fifth, times the derivative of the inside function is negative six x plus six plus zero, if you take the derivative of five. So you have negative six x plus six, and now we know the last step is always to replace the u with what we said the inside function was, negative 3x squared plus 6x plus 5. So 6 times negative 3x squared plus 6x plus 5 raised to the fifth power, and then times the derivative of the inside function was negative 6x plus 6. And so this is the derivative of this composite function using the chain rule. All right, number four. This time the function is y equals the quantity t subtract natural log of t in parentheses, and that's all raised to the fourth power. So again, this is a composite function because you have a function that's inside the parentheses and the function is being raised to the fourth power. So it looks like the inside function is what we're going to call u, t minus natural log of t inside the parentheses. The outside function will be y equals u to the fourth power. And so the chain rule says, what's the derivative of the outside function with respect to u? What's the derivative of u to the fourth? It's 4u cubed. What's the derivative of the inside function? Well, the variable is t. So the derivative of t is 1, just like the derivative of x is 1 when we take the derivative with respect to x. The derivative with respect to t, when t is a variable, would be 1. And the derivative of natural log of t would be 1 divided by t. So it's 1 subtract 1 divided by t is the derivative of the inside function. And the derivative of the outside function was 4u cubed. So now I'll go back and replace the u with t subtract natural log of t. So 4 times the quantity, t subtract natural log of t cubed and then you have multiplied by one minus one over t. And so again, we found the derivative of this composite function. We don't really need to simplify. So number five, the function is y equals the cube root of three x squared plus five x. We even had to rewrite the cube root of just x as a fraction power. So that's what we're gonna have to do here too. The inside function is what's inside the cube root. So three x squared plus five x goes inside the parentheses. And the fraction power would be one-third, because this is a cube root. Now, that's just rewriting the function. We actually have not taken the derivative yet. We know that the inside function will be u equals 3x squared plus 5x. The outside function would then be u to the one-third power. So using the chain rule, dy dx would be the derivative of the outside function. So the derivative of u to the one-third would be using the power rule. Take one-third to the front and then keep the u as the variable, and then subtract 1 from the power. So 1 3rd subtract 1 gives you negative 2 thirds. So 1 3rd u to the negative 2 thirds times what's the derivative of the inside function? So the derivative of the inside function would be the derivative of 3x squared, that's 6x, and the derivative of 5x would be 5. So the quantity 6x plus 5. And again, the last step is to replace the u with the inside function, 3x squared plus 5x. So 1 3rd 
3x squared plus 5x raised to the negative 2 thirds power times the derivative of the inside function, 6x plus 5. All right, let's do a few more of these. Number six, you have the function y equals e raised to a power 10x cubed subtract 4. So this is an exponential function, and it looks like it's not just e to the x like we had before. It's e to a function. Well, the inside function is the power. It's u equals 10x cubed subtract 4, which means the outside function would be y equals e to the u because we're replacing the 10x cubed minus 4 with a u. And we know the chain rule says we need to take two derivatives. We need to take the derivative of the outside function. So what's the derivative of e to the u? It's an exponential function with base e, so we know it stays exactly the same. So it stays e to the u. And then what's the derivative of the inside function? What's the derivative of 10x cubed? It's 30x squared using the power rule. And the derivative of negative 4 is 0. So you have 30x squared is the derivative of the inside function. And now replace the u with... 10x cubed minus 4 is what we said the inside function was. So 30x squared, derivative of the inside function, times the derivative of the outside function is e to the 10x cubed minus 4, after you replace the u. Number 7, this time we have y equals 3 raised to a function, which is x squared, subtract 5x plus 6. So again, this is an exponential function, but this time the base is 3 rather than e. So again, notice that the exponent is a function, so that's going to be the inside function. So u equals x squared minus 5x plus 6, and that means the outside function would be y equals 3 to the u power. The chain rule says dy dx, because that's the derivative of y, the function's name, where x is a variable, is the derivative of the outside function with respect to u. So what's the derivative of 3 to the u power? Well, it's an exponential function, so it stays the same. But we know that if it's not base e, we have to multiply by natural log of the base. So 3 to the u times natural log of 3 times what's the derivative of the inside function with respect to x. It's 2x because that's the derivative of x squared, and the derivative of negative 5x is negative 5, and the derivative of 6 is 0. So you have 2x minus 5. So you have 3 to the u times natural log of 3 times the quantity 2x minus 5, and again, replace the u with the inside function x squared minus 5x plus 6. So 2x minus 5 is the derivative of the inside function, natural log of 3, times 3 to the x squared minus 5x plus 6 power. That's the derivative of this exponential function using the chain rule. Now let's try one more, number 8. This time it's a logarithmic function. y equals log base 6 of negative 3x squared plus 5x. That's the argument of the logarithm. So again, notice that, that this is a composite function. You have an inside function that's inside the logarithm, and the logarithm, base 6, is the outside function. So inside function is u equals negative 3x squared plus 5x. The outside function is y equals log base 6 of u. So again, one more time, the chain rule is dy dx, dy du times du dx. So derivative of the outside function. So what's the derivative of log base 6 of u? We have a formula for this. It's 1 divided by u, which is the argument of the logarithm, times, because this is not natural log, it's log base 6, you have to multiply by natural log of 6 in the denominator. So that's the derivative of the outside function. What's the derivative of the inside function? Well, it's much easier to do. You have the derivative of negative 3x squared, that's negative 6x. Derivative of 5x is 5, so the quantity negative 6x plus 5. And so now the last step is always replace the u with the inside function that we called it earlier u is negative 3x squared plus 5x. So it's negative 6x plus 5 times 1, that's in the numerator. And then you have u is replaced with negative 3x squared plus 5x in parentheses times natural log of 6. So notice in these last eight problems, we always use Leibniz notation because it's much easier to understand the chain rule with Leibniz notation. You have the derivative of the outside function and you have the derivative of the inside function and you multiply the two derivatives together. We call the inside function u equals, and it will always be a function of x, and the outside function will always be y equals, and it will be a function of u. So let's finish up this video with an application of the chain rule. Example 7, application of the chain rule. Suppose that 2,400 people now have a disease, and the number of people with the disease appears to double every three years. Then the number of people expected to have the disease in t years is given by this function. y equals 2,400 times base 2 raised to the t minus 3 exponent. So this is an exponential function where t is the variable. So part one, how many people are expected to have the disease in two years? 
So it's not talking about a rate of change or an instantaneous rate of change, so we don't need to calculate the derivative. We just need to talk about what is the function's value when t equals two years. So take the function y equals 2,400, base two, t divided by three exponent, and replace the t with a two. So after two years, the number of people who expected to have the disease would be 2,400 times base two to the two thirds exponent. So let's see what this gives us when we type it in the calculator. 2,400 times two raised to the two thirds exponent. It's approximately 3,809.76. Since we're talking about the number of people infected by the disease, we don't have 3,810 people infected. We have only 3,809 people infected. So just ignore the decimal place when you're talking about the units being people. Part two, when are 50,000 people expected to have the disease? So again, we're not talking about a rate of change. We're not talking about the derivative yet. This is talking about 50,000 people expected to have the disease. So how much time into the future before 50,000 people will be infected? That's the y value. The y value is 50,000 people when the function's talking about the number of people infected after t years. We need to find out what is the value of t. So this gives us an equation. We have 50,000 is equal to 2,400 times base 2 to the t divided by 3 exponent. This is an exponential equation, and we need to solve for the t that's in the exponent. So we know how to do these. We have to isolate the exponential expression first. So divide both sides of the equation by 2,400 on the right side and the left side. So 2,400 divided by 2,400 will just be 1. You'll be left with 2 to the t divided by 3 power on the right side. On the left side, 50,000 divided by 2,400 reduces to 125 divided by 6. So again, don't round until you get to the very last step. We wanted to avoid round off error. So now we have this equation where we have base two isolated on the right side of the equation and we want to solve for the exponent, which is t. So we have to use the logarithms combined with the power law for logarithms. So take the natural log on the left side of the equation. So natural log of 125 divided by six and then also natural log on the right side of the equation. Natural log of two to the t divided by three power now what happens is that we can use the power law with logarithms. You can take the t divided by 3 down because that's going to be a coefficient now. So you'll have natural log of 125 divided by 6 on the left side unchanged. On the right side of the equation you have t divided by 3 times natural log of 2 left over. And so now t is no longer an exponent so you can solve for t by multiplying and dividing. So you have division by 3 so you want to undo that so multiply both sides of the equation by 3. And you also have natural log of 2 that's being multiplied by t. So to undo that, divide by natural log of 2 on both sides of the equation. So take natural log of 125 divided by 6, divide by natural log of 2, and also multiply by 3. So 3 times natural log of 125 divided by 6, and then divide by natural log of 2, and you'll be left with just t. And so you'll have t is equal to 3 times natural log of 125 divided by 6, get that answer, and then divide by natural log of 2. So you'll have parentheses for the numerator, 3 times natural log of 125 divided by 6, close the parentheses on the logarithm, close the parentheses on the numerator, then divide by natural log of 2, and you come up with 13.14 when you round the two decimal places. And since we're talking about how much time it'll take before 50,000 people will be infected, the units are in years. All right, last part. Part 3 says, how fast is the number of people with the disease expected to grow now? and two years from now. So it's talking about how fast is the number of people infected growing. That's a rate of change. So this is talking about a derivative. So the function was y equals 2,400 times base 2 to the t divided by 3 exponents. Well, it's a composite function. You have not just t in the exponent, you have t divided by 3. So we have to use the chain rule to find the derivative. So the inside function will be the exponent. So u equals t divided by 3. The outside function will be base 2 to the u. So y equals 2 to the u. So the chain rule says dy dt, because the variable is t this time instead of x, it's the derivative of the outside function. So the derivative of 2 to the u would be 2 to the u, because it's an exponential function, times the base is not e, so you have to multiply by natural log of the base, so natural log of 2, times the derivative of the inside function. This is one-third times t. So what's the derivative of one-third times t? It's one-third. So multiply by one-third as the derivative of the inside function. And then don't forget about the 2,400. Use the constant multiple rule to keep the coefficient. So 2,400 times 2 to the u times natural log of 2 
times one third. And so this will simplify to 2,400 divided by three gives you 800 times two to the t divided by three exponent, then multiply by natural log of two. So now we can find out how fast is the number of people infected growing now, so that's t equals zero, and two years, t equals two. So when t equals zero years, the derivative y prime or dy dt is 800 times two to the zero divided by three when we replace t with a zero times natural log of two. So when you type this into a calculator, you'll have 800 times two raised to the zero divided by three power, use the arrow key to get out of the exponent, times natural log of two. Close the parenthesis on the natural log, and this is approximately, make sure that you round to the nearest whole number because we're talking about number of people infected per year. It's 554. So approximately 554 people infected per year as a rate of change. And then after two years, do the same thing, but replace t with a two this time. So the derivative of y prime or dy dt would be 800 times two to the two thirds power times natural log of two. So we're gonna change the exponent on the base two, this time to two thirds. And so you get approximately 880 when you round to the nearest person. So after two years, the rate of change in the number of people infected would be changing at 880 people infected per year. So this is a good place to stop our video after we've talked about the chain rule and also an application of the chain rule. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about finding derivatives of complicated functions.